All right, guys, it is Wednesday. Thought I would show a couple of modifications that I'm doing uh, to the four door here. Now, this is something I've done a few times to my 55s in the past. I always change my dimmer switch out to, uh, I basically tell them at the parts store, 1972 Chevy pickup. Uh, anyway, it gets rid of the factory 55 one, which mounts from out here, and also the wiring is out here. Uh, if you've ever taken one of these cars apart, you'll notice that the three screws and the ring terminals and all that's always rusty, corroded, nasty mess. So I like to make sure that the wiring and all that stuff is inside the car. So this is just what I do uh, to do that. I will basically take sheet metal and, uh, you know, stick poster board or whatever behind that and then draw it out with a fine tip Sharpie and then trans cut it out, transfer it to steel, trace it out, and then cut it with 10 snips. And then I true up the edge with a little Rolock disc. But anyway, I'll set it up inside there and I've got a magnet on the back side, but it's absolutely flush right there. Uh, so I'll end up tacking this, tack, 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 until it's fully tacked and then grind it smooth. But on the mounting holes that's in there, the factory holes, I use quarter by 20 square nuts that I get at Lowe's. You can get a four pack of those for just a couple of bucks. They're CAD plated. Uh, what I like to do is put the nuts on a, on bolts, uh, just run it on a couple of threads backwards. Uh, the flat part that actually meets the tow board here, I take a wire wheel and a bench grinder to it, clean off the CAD plating on the, on the facing edge and then on the sides here. And then I'll bolt it on here to where they're kind of straight. And then I'll put a couple of stitch welds on here uh, on each side of the square nuts to, to lock them down basically. Now, normally I would use uh, some 3M weld through primer, you know, spray some on here so the nuts would be on there and it won't corrode behind them. But I am out. I went down to the parts store this morning and they didn't have any in stock, so I just came back home and I'm just going to weld it up. But anyway, I've got uh, a magnet holding it in there and uh, I've actually put a couple of things of duct tape here to catch any kind of little things that might try to pop through or whatever from the welding spatter or something, if it has any. That way it won't come down here on my fresh. PR15 mess it up but anyway I did do a little uh, seam sealer I had just a little bit here uh, two part left over and that's pretty much as far as I could get with it that's all that was left in the tube but uh, it ended up working out uh, still got a little bit more to go but so anyway here is uh, the bad so viewer discretion is advised so I knew this had body filler back here in the back so I ended up uh, heating up. I used a propane torch here and a wire brush. And of course I had goggles on and I had on a long sleeve shirt and welding gloves and all that. Uh, but anyway, I melted all the lead out and uh, knocked it all out of there. What I like to do is go through here and tack all this up until it's fully welded and then grind it. Uh, that way you don't have any lead issues. Um, anyway, you know, lead tends to crack and then it also uh, over time you'll notice little tiny bubbles here and there if your lead's ever been exposed uh, so and I can show you right here there's a crack in a lead seam right there so on my hardtop I got rid of all the lead seams it's all uh, butt welded sheet metal through here uh, up here and back here, I cut all the flanges out and built a, built a piece and formed it to fit all in there and then just all butt welded and smoothed out. But anyway, so <clears throat> this, even though it looks bad, is not that bad of a repair to do out of flat sheet metal. Basically what I'll do is I'll make two pieces, but I'll cut this square and I'll cut this out pretty much, you know, square it off a little bit. But I'll make a piece that fits out here and then I'll make a piece that fits in here and then I'll butt weld it together and uh, or just weld it together and then I'll grind the weld until it has that same radius that's on the the roll there but anyway I've repaired these before there's none of them's ever been this big so it looks to me like they went in here and just kind of butchered the crap out of it and then they had it full of filler here's what was in there just chunks of filler down in there and they actually had a piece of tin stuck up in behind there so the the filler would stay or not you know, drip out I guess but anyway so I'm gonna end up welding this up on both sides I'm gonna cut this flange out of here completely uh, cut a piece of steel that it will fit in there perfectly butt welded and then I'll grind it all so it'll all be one piece 
and then I'll patch all that. I'm gonna wait and do all this after the body's bolted down on the frame. Um, that way the body's pretty much where it needs to be uh, because there's probably gonna be a little deck lid uh, modifications going on in here. These uh, deck lids on these Tri-5s, they never fit well at all. I mean, they're just, they got them close enough and they called it a day. Uh, you can tell right here, this has a, this is just factory, the way it's folded, it's really tight in this little spot right here. So I'll go in here with a roll lock and open this up a little bit and then I'll, you know, it usually separates the, the folded, uh, the bottom and the top from each other. So you'll have to go in there and tack it back together and then go back and grind it again. But you, that's the way to get a good, nice line. Now on, on these deck lids, uh, they're, they're always a mess. They, they stick up past the body. Um, sometimes they're down in and uh, they, they're not up where they need to be to meet, meet the quarter panel, which that's pretty much an easy fix. You can do that with shims behind the, between the hinge and the deck lid. You know, even maybe one shim would fix it instead of doing two, but you just kind of got to gotta mess with it a little bit. Now here's something that, this will be the third time I've had to do this to a Tri-5 deck lid. Now I've got this thing pulled down to where it's as good as it's going to get. You can see it kind of fits across here and here, but right here the deck lid is lower than this, like almost all the way across, this being the deepest point. So what I normally do uh, I remember the very first time I tried it, I stuck a 2x4 right up in here like this, and I closed the deck lid. Now when I did that, it pretty much screwed everything up. So that was the pretty much the wrong thing to do. So what I ended up doing is removing the deck lid off the car. I turned it upside down, and I had a two sections of 4x4 four four, uh, pieces of wood, uh, like a 4x4 four four post, like I've got the body on right here, and I laid Laid, it, laid them down on the ground and I had a 4x4 running across this and across here. That way it was upside down, you know, but it had, it was leaning on this top edge right here. And I basically stood my whole body weight right in the center of that deck lid and just kind of give it a little, little whoop, you know. And uh, when I put it back on, it actually had been it up a little bit higher right here in the middle, it was a little bit higher. So at that point, I took a 2x4 and a dead blow hammer and I stuck it right right at that edge and I whacked that thing and it actually got it down pretty even. So you have to tweak around on these deck lids quite a bit. Like this is how you make stuff fit. Now one thing you'll notice right away on this car is see how close that deck lid is right there and then how far away it is over here. And it's even almost touching right there. So what you would do is you would grab, open the deck lid a little bit and you would grab it here and use your other hand and grab it here and twist that thing, like twist this section that way. Like just give it a heave ho and that will get it a lot closer. So I'm just gonna have to tweak around on it. I mean, it's gonna be a massive, you know, tweaking and bending and prying to get them to fit better. <clears throat> but anyway, on this car, if I can't get this tweaked over to where it takes up this gap and opens up, you know, this one a little bit wider, when I cut this section out, I am gonna bend this out, like pull this part of the quarter out and just, you know, add that much more to the piece that I'm gonna put in there and butt weld. So, and I'll do the same over here. I'll actually cut this out and then pull this over. Even though the inner structure is still gonna be attached, it will, you will be able to tweak that just a little bit. Now, if your deck lid is in, like this one's out, actually when I pull it in, pull it in, it's good over here, but it's actually in over here this side of the deck lid is in from here so all you got to do there is just grab this deck lid and just give it a heave ho pull out on it now these things are pretty stiff so you got to really tweak around on it put some put some pressure on it but i'm not going to do anything until i get it bolted down on the on the frame and that way you know because in bodies they always do crazy stuff until you get them you know mounted back down firmly so you know right now the ass end of this car is just pretty much hanging out here in the wind so I'm going to wait until it's supported before I go back here and do all this stuff. So, Anyway, another little tip I'm going to give, and this is just the way I do it. I don't care how anybody else does it. It's just the way I've done it. So this car, uh, 55, you know, it's a, it was a six-cylinder car, so it did not have under tail light V8 emblems, which I got right here. They have two mounting tabs on the back. Now, if you got a V8 from the factory, they came with those. So... 
not having any measurements or anything, what I did was I measured off my hard top. Now the holes on this side are original. Uh, that's where they were placed from the factory. So what I did was I took a tailor's tape measure and I stuck it right at the base of the tail light, bezel right here, and held it up against the body all the way down till it got to the top of the bow tie. And it was actually about four and 15 sixteenths. It was just about five inches. So anyway, uh, what I did was I measured five inches down over here and then I put a Sharpie line on it and you can see my Sharpie lines right there. So that was five inches from the bottom of the tail light to that. Now this is what I'm talking about on is a tailor's tape. This is what I always use when I fabricate because these contour curved edges perfectly. I hate using a regular old steel tape measure because they don't contour that end of that tape measure always moves in and out. This is always gives you a precise measurement on whatever you use it on. So anyway, that's how I got my measurement. So at that point, I took a piece of poster board and I took this emblem and I stuck it on there and I shoved those two tabs through that poster board, poked two holes in it basically, and then I fit it up against the back of it. And I used a fine tip Sharpie and I traced it out. Then I pulled the emblem off the poster board and at that point, I cut it out with scissors, and this is it right here. When I punched that through, it actually made this hole a little bit too big, so I stuck this back on there and used a piece of tape to take up the slack. So anyway, this is pretty much that. So this is how you'll locate your two holes. Now, me having my lead seams out of here, it's easy to find center because this is dead middle. So what I did was I stuck the top of that bow tie to my Sharpie mark there, and I stuck that point right in the middle of that and then pushed that up there and I marked with a Sharpie the two holes. So there's your bow tie mounting stuff right there. Now, another tip I'll give you, if you'll notice the, the tabs on the back of these V8 emblems, they are straight. This curves around here and it curves around here. So normally when you drill sheet metal, if it's on an angle, you'll drill it straight on whatever angle it's on. But in this case, you have to drill straight. So. You know, use a spring punch or a punch and a small hammer and put you a couple small indents in there and then drill it out, which is what I did. I drilled them straight, so the emblem fits on there pretty nice. So, anyway, lots more work to do to the car, but thought I would give a few tips uh, on that deal. But that's how I do my under tail light V8 emblems on 55s. So, um... I guess that's about it. I just wanted to give a few little tips and tricks of stuff that I do. Um, you know, at dimmer switch, always get it for like a 72 Chevy pickup. Uh, it's like 10 bucks at the parts store and they're always in stock because they fit all kinds of GM vehicles, you know, so. And it puts the wiring on the inside of the car. I always like that. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna cut the video off, uh, clean up my mess because it's getting awful dark. Looks like we're gonna have another thing of rain. Thanks for watching.